And then we'll go home. <laughs> I mean, Stand I knew better, but... Stand by. We're going to start right here. This is going to be recorded <laughs> for us. This is okay. just a recording for us. <clears throat> Should I put my papers down? Yes, please. Okay. So thank you for being with us today. Good morning. Good morning. So tell me, how common are snake bites in the United States? Well, there are about eight to 9,000 venomous snake bites in the United States every year. And what are some ways to identify a venomous snake that can be treated with an anti-venom? Ideally, if you haven't been bitten, it's best not to try and identify the snake, just to uh, move away from the animal. There's no reason to handle it. But if you have been bitten, if, there's, you're, if you're having any symptoms, bleeding, swelling, redness, pain, then you should seek medical care. And what should we do if a loved one gets bitten by a snake? If a loved one gets bitten, the best thing to do is to seek uh, medical expertise. Uh, you can call 911, go to your local emergency department. Upon arrival to the emergency department, you'll be evaluated and if there's symptoms, and typically you'll be offered the definitive care, which is the antivenom Crofab. What are some of the function, functional outcomes of patients bitten by a snake after treatment? It depends where the patient is bitten, but if they're bitten on the leg, you would expect some disability of use of the, of the leg, so difficulty walking. The hand, of course, would be different, but pain, swelling, all that would cause limitation in use of the hand, so uh, difficulty with the activities of the hand. And they're also one of the risks with uh, venomous snake bite is bleeding, so internal bleeding remote from where you were actually bitten. Well, Lori, I'd like to ask you if you can tell us about your daughter's snake bite story. Sure. My two-year-old daughter, Riley, uh, was playing in the backyard with her cousins, and she began to cry, and she had some blood dripping from her leg. She became very lethargic, her eyes glazed over, so we immediately put her in the car and we called 911. We uh, met the ambulance just as she was becoming unresponsive. During this time, my brother went to the backyard to check the backyard and he saw a four and a half foot rattlesnake. So upon arrival at the local hospital, knowing that she had two wet bites from a rattlesnake, she was intubated and she was given the drug called Crofab. And then she was airlifted to another hospital where she remained in ICU for approximately a week. She had uh, went through some treatments, uh, including several surgeries to save her leg. She also had some blood transfusions. She then had 20 doses of uh, the antivenom Crofab. Once returning home, she had took several weeks to begin playing and walking again. We are um, very happy to say that despite having some muscle and nerve permanent damage. She is running around with her sister and she's back to her happy, healthy self. And we, without this treatment, she wouldn't be here with us today. So we are very thankful. Well, that's great news, Lori. Thank you for sharing that story. Thank you. And how can we properly dress for heading outdoors in the spring? If you're gonna be uh, headed outdoors in a place where you know there are venomous snakes, the best thing to do is wear good leg protection, high boots if possible, and then of course, uh, if you're gonna be reaching under anything or using your hands, gloves would be good. And thank you so much for being with us today, but can you tell our audience where we can go for more information? There is an app you can download, it's Snakebite 911, or of course you can contact your local poison center. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you.